There are three main types of time we talk about in manufacturing. Lead time versus cycle time versus pack time. But they can be confusing. The good news is they won't be after you watch this video explaining the differences, the definitions, and how to calculate things like tack time. Hi, I'm Russell Watkins from Senpai, where we show you practical lean techniques to help you improve your manufacturing business. In this video, I'll use visuals and examples to make the differences between lead time, cycle time, and tack time clear. Make sure you stick around to the end, because I'm gonna show you a smart way to agree and set the best cycle time for a new process without just taking a lazy average of five, 10 timings. With the three times, it's easiest to start with cycle time and tack time and come to lead time later. Cycle time here you can see is defined as how long it takes to do the work at each operation in the manufacturing process. A floor to floor cycle time, so from the same point to the same point, say load to load. You can see from the image you can only ever capture that via a stopwatch. On the other hand, tack time is a calculation. It's defined as how frequently we need to produce a part off the end of the manufacturing process to satisfy the customer. The calculator image is important because it shows that it's a calculated number, you can't capture tack time on a stopwatch. You look at the available hours they have, net available hours divided by the demand. We have a separate short video on that and you'll see the links below. Critically, for any stage in the manufacturing process, cycle time must be below tack time. Let's move on to introduce lead time. You can see a value stream map here and this indicates a process, a manufacturing process with suppliers on the left hand side, process A, B and C, a paint process, assembly and a customer on the right hand side. You can see the process A, B, C, the paint and assembly, each of them will have a separate cycle time, how long it takes to do each of them. And these are circled. Also, you can see that the customer, we've calculated the tack time. So every one of those five processes has to be below the tack time. And that's the relationship between cycle time and tack. Tack time is a number that keeps us honest. It's a critical number that links us to the customer and gets us pulling rather than pushing. In this example, you can see that the cycle times are okay I say, okay, they can meet custom demand at process A, process C, paint, but you can see that assembly and process B can't possibly keep up. You can't meet customer demand. And you can make an argument that A, C, and paint are too low anyway. There is a uh, waste in there. Now, the final part of the puzzle, lead time. Lead time is you calculate the overall dock to dock or wound to tomb time from the factory gates of parts and bits coming in all the way through to the factory gates when you send out the finished goods to your customer. And essentially you add up all of the cycle times through the process and you convert the inventory in between into time based on the demand. There's a separate video to show how to do that. It's in the link. Earlier I said I was gonna give you a bonus of a smart way to agree and set the best cycle time for a new process without just taking a lazy average of five or 10 timings. Let's do that with a simple example. So imagine you record the same process five times. Here's your five times. One, two, three, four, five. First time you stopwatch, you've got 20 seconds, then 16, 17, 21, 23. The lazy way of doing this is to take an average. You sum them all up and you take an average, which is 97 divided by five, which gives you 19 seconds. Now, that gives you a number that never actually happened. It's a lazy way of doing it. A better way of doing it is not average cycle time. It's minimum repeatable time. A minimum repeatable time is where you put those times in order, like I am now, and you choose the second time in to set the cycle time because you've seen that at least once before and then. So you've seen two repetitions of that. You set the cycle time there, you know it's repetitive. Then your job is to find out what's differing here, what's varying to mean you can't hit that time frequently. And in long term, your idea is, assuming that you're not jeopardizing safety and quality here to get the 16 seconds, how do I get the whole lot down to 16 seconds? But look at the difference. You go from 19 seconds, if you're lazy, to setting the cycle time at 17 seconds with minimum repeatable time. Remember to check out all the links and resources I've got for you down in the description box, and I'll see you in the next video.